Welcome back to The Vocalist. Today, we are listening to the band Kansas. I know they have so many great songs, but this one is a favorite of mine. So we are going to watch a live performance of Carry On My Wayward Son. Here we go. I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse behind this illusion I was soaring ever higher But I flew too high Though my eyes could see I still was a blind man Though my mind could think I still was a madman I hear the voices when I'm dreaming Oh, I can hear them say Carry on Okay, I know <laughs> I have the hardest time pausing sometimes. Um, we're going back. Honestly, I so I haven't seen, I mean, I've heard the song many, many times, but I have not seen a live performance and I am kind of blown away at how uh, how good uh, his vocals are. Steve Walsh, I they're so delicate. Um, which, yeah, it really surprised me when, I don't know, not that I expect a rock band to have an inferior performance compared to a studio, studio recording, but as always, so much energy, so much intensity, so many other variables when you're outside of the studio, and obviously, based off of, you know, his glistening, um, this is not early on in, in the concert. So, you know, he's already been doing a lot uh, with his voice and with his body. And yeah, I'm just, I'm blown away. Here we go, back to the beginning. <laughs> I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse behind this illusion I was soaring ever higher But I flew too high It is so gorgeous. It's like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why my brain is going here. But it's like, if I imagine, you know, all the great rock singers combined mixed with a little bit of Prince Charming because he's got this, like, elegance and this smooth warm tone that is so beautiful and you can see I mean just like the shape of his neck like I imagine he's probably naturally got a very um very wide uh vocal tract you know you're getting a lot of space just from genetics um but then on top of that what he what he's doing you can see him open his mouth and all the ex all the added stuff that creates this warmth is also a beautiful thing to see. Uh, back we go. Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse behind this illusion I was soaring ever higher But I flew too high Though my eyes could see I still was a blind man Though my mind could think I still
those harmonies aren't quite what we hear in the studio recording, but they're still very tight and very clean. And again, just seeing both the fatigue in these musicians, but also the push forward to just like rally and get the energy they need for this song is such a beautiful thing to see. I've been saying that a lot. <laughs> I need to say, I don't know how else to say it. It, it is, it's a love, it's a lovely thing to see. <laughs> Here we go. What a great transition, like uh, jamming out on the keys and then just masquerading. I love that. Um, oh, I was going to say something else. I'm just, I'm having too much fun. Here we go. Here we go. Masquerading as a man with a reason. My charade is the event of the season. Got to actually talk a little bit more about vocals. Gorgeous mix here. Um, let me back that up. Masquerading as a man with a reason. My charade is the event of the season. And if I claim to be a wise man. And here, it's not that it's brighter. It just has this tiny little... Um, added lightness to it and maybe a little bit more openness um, because we're getting some more of that head voice. It surely means that I don't know On the stormy sea of moving emotion This is a good, actually this is a great um, image. I don't know if it's going to get blocked, but um, with his neck, just how wide his neck is. I claim to be a wise man It surely means And then at the end, we get a little bit more grit in that mix as he goes up closer to that sort of scream rock sound of this particular era. Um, and then we even got a little bit of vibrato and you can see him manually making that um, just t the tiniest, tiniest bit at the ends of these longer notes, which I think is such a great artistic choice. Toss around, I'm like a ship on the ocean. I said, it goes for winds of fortune, yeah. But I hear the voices say, Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more. I gotta watch that again when he I don't know how he even saw the keys between like drumming so hard sweat pouring hair in his face and then having that incredible like little uh, I don't even know that little solo on the keys was just so good um, let me see oh that was it that was it let me go back further
also in that moment, he, um, let me back it up a smidge. So when he first went up, you could see a lot more scrunch. Like he was really bringing the cheeks up. But then the second time around, I think he already found the placement that he needed and realized he didn't. Well, I say realize you guys ask this all the time. Like, do you think these singers are actually, you know, thinking all these technical things? Absolutely not. You know, occasionally, sure. You might be really trying to set up for a particular note, but our bodies really can do a lot of things intuitively as long as we've got, you know, that muscle memory and those habits built up. And so I, when I make these comments, you know, it's not that they're being purposeful every single time. It's just that they've got the technique um, sort of ingrained to, and the ability to, to make these choices yet not make the choices. If that makes sense. If that, man, I said makes a lot. Ugh. I'm bothering myself with my words today. Okay, here we go. Uh... after that one um shame on me for waiting so long to watch a live performance because the energy was just incredible to watch i i can't even fathom the stamina that they had built up in order to maintain that level of intensity for so long um i didn't even talk about really the song itself but that's like a whole nother conversation when it comes to just great songwriting, like lyrics, story, um, the sections, you know, just ugh, so many good things there. Um, but yeah, I think I just need to watch it again to like take in all of that live energy. Um, and again, to have whenever, and I say this so, so often, when you have so much tension in your muscles and so much movement, of course, it's going to affect your voice. But to see how little he allowed it to affect his voice is incredibly impressive that we weren't, I mean, and of course, you know, that moment when he was just rocking out and then he gently turned to the mic and just started serenading, you know, he really was able to just kind of switch it off and relax so that he could deliver what he needed to vocally. And then of course he goes back and is jumping everywhere and just, it's so cool to see, but yeah, um, I don't know that I'm, I imagine, yes, there are plenty of bands today that deliver exciting live performances like that. I don't think I've ever experienced one in person. So if you have any recommendations, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> um, but that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.